What's up, y'all? I just wanted to share this research with you. It's uh, another contribution to the discussion on squat depth and training transfer. So what they did is they took a group of subjects and they actually uh, trained them under supervision for six months, a couple, uh, a couple times per week, leading up to the study period. Uh, this was so that they could basically say that all the subjects were well trained. Um, however, they were still not terribly strong or athletic um, leading into the study period. Um, I think their average deep squat max, uh, max was 1.17 times body weight. Um, so then they broke them into four groups for the, for this, the research period. They had a control group that stopped lifting and then a deep squat, parallel squat, and half squat uh, group. Half squat was to a 90 degree angle at the knee. So then they did eight weeks of training, or it might have been more than eight, don't quote me on that. Uh, eight weeks of training with each group doing um, you know, just the squat depth that they were assigned to. And then after that training period, they uh, assessed uh, the changes in strength, um, counter movement jump, 20 meter sprint, and then also like some pain and stiffness scores, uh, which was uh, unique, I think, to this study. And uh, in this study, basically deep squats just dominated across the board. Um, they had, they produced the largest strength gains. They even produced uh, <laughs> larger strength gains in the half squat than the half squat training group got. Okay, so better strength gains um, all across the board. Um, and then also on average, better counter movement jump gains and, um, and 20 meter sprint gains. And then I believe it said that every group had like some level of increase in pain or stiffness, you know, whatever those scores were. Um, but the half squat group was the only one that had like statistically significant um, increase in physical dysfunction or something like that. So this was just a slam dunk victory for deep squats, which I of course love to see, but uh, you know, this does not end the discussion on squat depth and training transfer or anything like that. Um, you know, it is a piece of evidence, but we're always gonna have to keep trying to learn more. Um, this is one study that was done on, you know, not advanced athletes. So um, be careful with, you know, drawing too strong of a conclusion from that. However, it is, you know, strong evidence against the sort of the black and white claims people make about deep squats, like, oh, this, they don't transfer to um, sprinting and jumping, or, oh, they're gonna give you hip and knee and back pain, or, oh, these are definitely not as good for strength and hypertrophy as squatting to 90 degrees, or, you know, something like that. Um, this is definitely evidence, strong evidence against those types of claims. So in terms of strength, Deep squats are amazing. They're probably the best tool we have for developing lower body strength, honestly. Um, as far as training transfer, you know, that's a very complex topic. I'm not gonna try to sum it up. I'm not gonna make any black and white statements on that. Um, we do have to acknowledge that deep squatting is very different than, uh, you know, max velocity sprinting, for example. Because of that difference, we do have to make sure that we use deep squats strategically, um, you know, and, and we don't overuse them. Uh, and we use them in the correct context with the correct athlete, okay? So there's a lot of things that go into those types of decisions, but they definitely can be used effectively, okay? Uh, people who say that they can't be um, just aren't doing it right, is what it comes down to. All right, so if you want to get good at squatting deep and get strong and use some strategies that allow that to transfer to better jumping, then you need to check out some jump science programs. Link in description.